last uh, lecture. And um, so today I'd like to talk about some aspect of uh, regularity of this bracket flow. So um, as you saw yesterday, uh, even though you have just uh, this one inequality, in fact, uh, you can do quite a lot of things with this, and uh, surprisingly, in fact. Uh, and uh, one of the surprises of this bracket flow is that uh, this uh, regularity theory that I'll tell you today. So um, well, let, let mu t be the bracket flow. Um, this is totally uh, local uh, thing, so um, let me say that uh, k dimensional. Uh, bracket flow in you know, some open set. Okay, I, I, I kept talking about bracket flow in whole Rn, but it doesn't have to be, whole, of course, on the whole Rn, as in uh, definition of 1.4 or uh, 1.5 uh, in some open set in Rn. Okay, and then uh, the following is uh, is uh, theorem 4.1. Is that um, okay? So this is just any general uh, bracket flow, k-dimensional okay, bracket flow. But there's uh, an assumption I make here is assume that uh, this mu t is in addition is uh, is unit density flow is unit density uh, flow. So that means just I remind you. What this means was that uh, for almost for almost all time, not not all time, but almost all time, I say that the mu t is of this form, uh, h k of gamma k and gamma t, where uh, so meaning uh, uh, this multiplicity function I talked about is equal to one, okay, almost everywhere in space time. So the meaning of this is really that uh, even if you start out with you know, this kind of multiplicity one situation, the surface, maybe at some point, maybe some piece of the surface may come together, which may not be likely, but you know, at least you cannot, it's very difficult to exclude this kind of situation when singularity happens. And afterwards, maybe you, you have these two things moving together. And that's the sort of picture uh, that I'm afraid of. And I'm assuming here that that's not, that you know you 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 always you have this situation. So, by the way, so uh, existence of such flow uh, is can be proved at least for short time. Uh, for example, uh, you saw the uh, existence theorem uh, I talked about uh, the first, second and third day. And for that, uh, if I make some some reasonable assumption about the uh, density of the initial data, I know that the flow stays unit density for some short time, at least. So this is not totally empty assumption, okay? So the unit density is not, uh, well, unit density, let's see. No, it's not. Uh, unit density is not sufficient, but I have to, okay, so let me, <laughs> just, just a, a side story is, if I assume that there exists some R0 uh, such that, uh, Let's see, so your initial uh, configuration, uh, oh, yeah, R, X, K is less than or equal to strictly less than two minus nu, okay, and R to, um, let's see, um, R to K, omega K, so there exists some nu, and uh, with this, I suppose, um, so for all, okay, I'm not so sure this is sufficient. I think this should be sufficient. Maybe you can relax a bit more, but just to be uh, safe, for all x on my gamma zero. Then, uh, okay, so this kind of condition guarantees a short time, short time uh, unit density. Uh, for the flow that I constructed, okay. So unit density is not enough, actually, but you need to have some more, a bit more, you know, some room. And this, this can be proved by using a Huskin's model density formula. In fact, it's it's not so difficult to do that. Okay. So just uh, just as a side 
remark. Uh, you, you have this. Anyway, so <laughs> this, I haven't finished the theorem <laughs> statement. Okay, so what is the conclusion? Uh, all right, then conclusion is that uh, uh, the easy way of saying the conclusion is that then almost every time and almost everywhere, this flow is actually regular, C infinity flow, okay? So, uh, but the more technical term uh, is that for almost all time, time, and uh, there exists a closed set, okay, topologically closed set, uh, GT, which is in R, uh, no, which is in U, uh, such that uh, this GT has measure zero with respect to surface measure. Okay, so that's closed set, but measure zero set, and such that outside of this set, okay, outside of this set, uh, there exists a um, neighborhood, okay, neighborhood of uh, X and T, X T, in the space time, not just space, but space time neighborhood, okay, such that um, the, uh, basically this mu t is uh, uh, smooth, okay, C infinity mean curvature flow in this open neighborhood, okay. I hope that this makes sense, yeah, okay. So this GT is more like a singular set, okay. So there may be some singular time, but th that's measure zero. And outside of that singular time, there exists some possibly a singular set, but with, K with respect to k-dimensions, measure is zero, and it's, it's important that it's closed. Okay? It's closed and measure zero. And outside, you take a point outside, then there's an open neighborhood in space-time. I, I hope it's clear, yeah? It's not just space, but it, in space-time, open set, such that this guy, well, maybe I should say support of mu t, more precisely, support of mu t is actually C infinity mean coverage flow, very classical, you know, classical mean coverage flow that we've been seeing. Right? So even though, you know, this definition is extremely sweet looking with inequality, you do still have this uh, nice regularity. So it's almost everywhere at least, a nice smooth, okay? So it looks like kind of abstract object, but it's actually not so abstract. It's just that you have this small singularity uh, with respect, uh, that, which is small, with respect to space, uh, surface measure, and uh, that's actually uh, uh, somewhat surprising. When I first heard about this, uh, back maybe more than 20 years ago, uh, this is written actually in brackets, uh, famous book from 78, but uh, it was very difficult to understand the content, and I believe that no, uh, even the specialists had difficulty understanding. And, uh, and uh, this, this one, uh, so it's usually called brackets partial regularity uh, theorem. Uh, partial regularity theorem. So that's from 78. But I must say that there is uh, some uh, original proof of this brackets partial regularity theorem has uh, some uh, serious gap in the proof which I, I pointed out in my paper. And the complete proof is given by uh, us, uh, is my student Kasai and myself. Uh, that's uh, 14, that's calculus variation, variation PDE. That, that is, uh, this is actually, this is C1 alpha regularity theory. And then I uh, extend it to C2 alpha uh, advancing calculus variation. Uh, uh, this is uh, C2 alpha, and, and, and once you get to this, then you get to C infinity, okay? So anyway, so th these uh, two papers uh, really gave a clear, complete proof on this. Okay, so uh, I don't have time to explain this whole proof, but I, I want to uh, point out a few elements of the, um, this uh, uh, regularity theory. And, uh, but uh, okay, so now, Let's see, what was the things I want to say? Right, um, now, some of the, uh, the uh, one thing that uh, is a key 
of this, uh, getting this regularity theory is, well, first, you have to go from uh, lo local to global, but uh, let's see. Well, one key idea, maybe just for the, uh, some uh, people who are not so uh, familiar with this type of things, is that the thing is that uh, one thing you can arrange is that uh, for almost all, for almost all time, um, let, let me do, to be specific, I have a sub-index t zero, zero, and H K um, almost everywhere x zero. Okay, uh, x zero. Um, the things you can say first is that if this uh, measure, the, uh, this bracket flow is, is parabolically magnified, parabolically uh, uh, magnified, that is you kind of, you know, look at a point and then you kind of blow up, like magnify it. Parabolically means, you know, as you know, it's t is square x, uh, I, I, well, you, you know what that is. So parabolically magnified. Uh, then, uh, in fact, what you can you can conclude this. Conclude this you can conclude this. It is, uh, in fact, uh, close to uh, to uh, k-dimensional uh, plane. At least um, with respect to well, in the sense of measure. Okay, so that's the first one observation which must be sort of um, familiar to you if, if you have seen this kind of thing. The thing is, yeah, for almost all time and almost everywhere, if you magnify, uh, this object is not regular at all, but still almost everywhere and almost all time, you know it's close to some k-dimensional plane. Okay. So that, that can be arranged. So the key issue here is the following. So when your flow, this bracket flow is, very weak sense in a sense of measure close to a k-plane, then you want to conclude that then this guy has to be regular, okay? Right, so I'm not looking at anywhere, but I'm looking at the place where at least in a weak sense, very close to k-dimensional plane. Then you want to say it's regular. It's more like you're looking, you're trying to kind of do a, some kind of linear, linearization, right? If you're looking at some, something which is close to plane. And, uh, and it's not, re the, the regularity, um, um, proof is not by linearization, but the idea is like if you are looking at play, things which is close to plane, then uh, you know you expect that maybe the flow may be regular. Okay, so the key of yes. Right, right. I guess so. Yes, the one that yes, I, maybe I sh you, you are right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I should probably say that it, I'm, I, I, it's close to k plus one dimensional plane in space time, yes. So the measure is supposed to be close to that. Yes. But in time, right, right, right. right. The static, yes, static k dimensional plane, right. So, um, so the key is the, uh, so the key is the, is the um, so-called uh, Ipsilon regularity theorem, which I, I, is, we should ring the bell to people who are specialists in this regularity theory. Okay, regularity theory. So, um, so let's, um, let me see. So let me, um, just to give you the flavor of uh, this theorem, uh, just to uh, make it simple, I don't try to write the uh, statement in the strongest, strongest way. Okay, so, so I, I'm using, I, because if I do that, then it gets kind of um, messy. So uh, let's say that I, I do this notation. If bracket flow uh, mu t uh, is, uh, so just this with no quotation, because it, this is uh, some concept I, I just introduced just for this lecture. <laughs> so almost flat, okay. Um, in uh, BR uh, X zero cross 
this is time variable, my, uh, t0 minus r square, t0 plus r square. Okay, so this is space and time. Right? With error epsilon, if the following is true, if the following old. Okay, so what is the following? So this first one is uh, A is the, there exists a k-dimensional plane A, okay, through, which goes through x0, right, such that um, the support of mu t um, inside of this ball is uh, within the, uh, the, the epsilon distance from this k-dimensional plane. Okay, so to be precise, x such that distance from x to a is less than, uh, okay, so now not epsilon, but properly, to, to properly scale, I, I say uh, epsilon times r, okay, just because that's the right scaling, or um, all t of uh, minus t, uh, t zero minus r square, zero plus r square, okay, that's the first condition, and b is the other one. So this means, you know, this, this, uh, this manifold is staying in a sort of epsilon neighborhood of this k-dimension plane for the whole time. And the next one is the closeness of the measure. So I assume that uh, mu of t of b r x zero, divided by a uh, uh, k-dimensional uh, measure of a unit disk minus one is less than epsilon for also for this uh, relevant time. Okay, just to be precise. Okay, I hope this makes sense. I, I think it's not so difficult to understand this. It's just, you know, close. Um, uh, this support is lying in this plane, nearby plane, and this is saying that uh, if you compare the measure uh, of this uh, moving surface versus the, uh, you know, unit disk, k-dimensional unit disk, the difference is small, okay, for all time. So this really is claiming sort of, well, this is a soup norm bound, right? So it's a bit, looks kind of strong, but actually it's not so, uh, because of the proposition I presented uh, in the previous lecture. In fact, uh, some of the weak closeness does imply actually the L infinity closeness, in fact. So this one's not so tr strong. So, but I state in this way for, for, this, for the simplicity. This one is really closeness by measure, right? I mean, you are comparing the measure, your measure in to, with the uh, disk. Yeah. Okay, so uh, these are the definition of uh, uh, <laughs> What's the name? Uh, almost flat, right? Okay. So uh, then the conclusion is, if it's like that, then uh, it's regular, basically. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not right yet. Okay. So the theorem is a uh, theorem is that this is uh, as, as I said, uh, this is Cassian. T and T plus 14 is that suppose, oh, no, sorry, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay, maybe I should stay this way. Okay, so suppose we have a mu T, um, it's a local result, but just to be simple, I think I'll just state it in a whole entire space is a unit density uh, k-dimensional bracket law in Rn. It doesn't have to be Rn, actually, but just let me write this way. Just, there's some certain uh, relevant constant which I don't want to um, 
deal with. So, so if you just fix delta, then there exists some um, epsilon zero, which depends on um, dimension and how far you are away from t equal to zero, and also, um, let's say, initial measure, total measure, okay, which is small, okay, which is actually small, um, right, less than equal to zero, so with the following property. So this is totally independent of the flow itself, except that, well, you are assuming that this is, this epsilon may depend on the size as well as how far, how far you are away from time zero, okay? Right, and then the conclusion is that uh, whenever this flow is uh, almost flat, then it's regular. So, uh, Okay, so let's suppose mu t is almost flat, almost flat in vr x0 cross t0 minus r square, t0 cross r square, uh, which is in the, uh, away from zero. with error, error uh, epsilon zero, then, uh, then the support, support of mu t in uh, this smaller ball, so this is more like interior regularity result, so I need to go in a bit inside, t zero minus t of r square, T zero plus uh, so R square uh, is C infinity. Any okay. Okay. So as I said, if it's a unit density flow, almost everywhere and almost all time, you can arrange so that your flow is in this is satisfying this condition, okay? And then so you have this partial regularity. And I notice that, of course, this almost flatness uh, condition is, is, is not satisfied around, for example, a junction point. You know, junction point is not going to satisfy this almost flatness condition. So I'm not claiming any regularity at the junction point, for example. Okay, so away from junction point is what we are looking at. Okay, and, um, and uh, also, um, it's important that we have an estimate also. Okay, so uh, now moreover, because um, this is more, uh, to having an estimate is sometimes more, more very important um, in, uh, let's uh, uh, look at this, this cross, this, um, in this, this um, in here, um, the support of um, U T is represented as a graph, as a graph of function, graph, graph graph over this plane A that I, I talked about there, over A, okay, so it's not just, a, I'm, I'm claiming it's smooth, but also there's an estimate as a graph, okay. And uh, uh, just, just for the notational convenience, uh, let, 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 um, let, let us uh, uh, do a change of variable, uh, assume, do a change of variable and also appropriate also on uh, rotation Let's just change, do change of variable. Okay, so that just just uh, to write this as a graph, it's a bit messy. So so that this plane A is uh, just uh, uh, R K 
cross uh, zero, okay, zero min minus k, and um, x zero is zero, t zero is zero, and also by doing a uh, stretching by factor of r, I can assume that r to be equal to one, okay, so uh, I, I'm just, you know, you can arrange so that this is true, okay, just k, this a plane is moved back to the origin and then rotate, just stretch, okay, I get you that. And then uh, this su support can be represented as a graph over this rk, and so, um, Then, um, then there exists a f, which is a, a from a k dimensional ball of a radius one half, uh, and time is minus one half to one half to r n minus k. Okay, so that's a function which is going to represent the uh, moving surface uh, such that. This uh, the curvature flow is um, just nothing but just this graph. Okay, so the support of mu t. Uh, well, this I have to look at the um, k-dimensional ball cross um, cross cylinder uh, and intersecting with say v1. Okay, so that's is uh, equal to just a graph. Okay, so this is x1. X k, um, f one, x one, x k, and so forth. F n minus k, x one, x k. Okay. So it's really a graph function. This. Um, where uh, this x1, xk is um, in the ball radius one half. Okay, so that's, that really is a precise language that it says, you know, this support is really presented as a graph, okay, of f. And um, uh, also you have estimate, okay, and also the uh, CL norm, let's say, just to be very casual uh, in this, So this is usual uh, else order derivative in space and time. Okay. Uh, this is bounded by a constant depending on L, N, K, and so forth, and maybe some other constant that I wrote there. But let's just skip that. And uh, times the, okay, here is, I, I, instead of defining precise, I just say L infinity of, of height of the support of mu t in this ball, say. Okay. So um, this is like L infinity, you know, or, or you can say, well, in this case, maybe epsilon uh, is the one that we had there as a height, but, and you can actually replace this, uh, if you, you can replace some, this by something weaker, um, something I'd say minus one to one, dt of d1 of distance function from x to a square. Uh, yeah, maybe I should have okay, one well, half okay. mu t. Okay. Something like this, okay? Uh, or, or maybe I should say or less than cot. Right, so this is a uh, some quantity that is, if bracket flow is close to this plane K, this is something that you, you know it's going to be small, okay? There, it's, there's some argument, but uh, I can't detail, but you can s say that, okay? Let's see, I think that's it. Any question at this point? I hope that this makes sense, okay? And note that this is more like the property of a heat equation, if you know what it is. You see, heat equation, you can, dip, you know, you have the estimate of all derivative in terms of some weak norm, like such as L2 of uh, function itself, right? Uh, actually, heat equation, it's better. 
But actually, uh, here it's, it's not as good, but you can make it better than this, in fact. Which, uh, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So doesn't this move this from two papers, right? The first one is C1 alpha. Yes. Right, right. Yeah, I was going to tell you this, but uh, okay, maybe. Yeah. Well, actually, maybe I can. T yeah. Okay. No, just I, I have this note comment. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So first you do C1 alpha. And then, in fact, to get to C2 alpha, C1 alpha still doesn't give you the equality. You see, you see you black is formulation is by inequality. So even if you have C1 alpha, you still don't have equality yet. So now, so that means you don't have PDE yet, even in a weak form, right? Yeah, well, actually, it's not that, in fact. That, that's, uh, it, that, that's not the case, in fact. But yes, you have to get, once you get C1 alpha, you actually, uh, you actually have to do another certain kind of blow-up argument, and which involve, uh, in fact, very interestingly, new uh, monotonicity type formula, which is available only for mean curvature flow, in fact. So this is something that I actually found uh, just by chance. And, uh, which I, I don't have time to talk about this, but uh, it's in the paper of this uh, second one, <laughs> if you're interested. It's actually very interesting somehow. You use, okay, so maybe I should say a bit more. So the, this monotonicity formula is the one that you, you make a me measure, you look at the distance from the uh, paraboloid, which is a solution of the heat equation. Okay? So you have some kind of second order approximation. So the way you do it, you, you look at the heat solution of the heat equation, you look at the distance from that, and then uh, you show that that distance function squared times the, um, this backward heat kernel is monotone decreasing. Okay. That's, then it's a, well, not only that, you have extra term which give you some kind of Dirichlet energy control of the graph. And then uh, that, that's a key uh, estimate. And uh, using that, you get C2 alpha. And then, then once you get that, you prove that the uh, velocity is, in fact, equal to mean curvature vector. Yeah. Then once you have that, then that's classical after that. Yeah. So, okay. So I hope that's clear. Okay, so let's see. Um, so for the rest of the time, I would like to um, give you some kind of indication of uh, idea of the proof. Okay. Now, let's see. Okay, so maybe uh, I should first point out uh, uh, the following. So, for, for the people who have never seen this kind of thing, I, I just want to, but with some background in PD, maybe. Um, in, in the case of a minimal surface, if, okay, so just let's consider the, as a comparison, uh, the static case, okay, so that is the case where mean curvature is not moving. So that means it's minimal surface. Okay, what do you do in the case of minimal surface? And the, by the way, this regularity theory corresponds to the so-called Allard regularity theorem if it's uh, in time independent. Okay, so uh, my, uh, my proof should reduce to Allard regularity proof, okay, basically. But, um, okay, so now recall that uh, uh, in the case of a minimal surface, that is, in the case that this mean curvature Okay, is equal to zero. Okay, so that is really a time independent situation. You know, this velocity was mean curvature, so it's time independent. Uh, now, what is the equation in this case? So, the equation is this one equation. Okay, so let's say mu is equal to hk of gamma. Okay, so uh, in this case, the equation we have is this, as, we, uh, as I explained this. Just let me write this way. Is equal to minus of, uh, I used this many times, H 
Ah, OK. OK. But now this is equal to 0. So this is true for any vector field, OK? Vector field. So that's equal to that's the equation that you you know you have, and if you think about the sort of linearization of this very rough language, but just to give you an idea, linearizing, assuming that everything is nice and smooth, okay, the linearized equation of this uh, is roughly speaking, well, when when say when you're looking at the problem in R n plus one and k is equal to n, okay, so just just to just to um, make it simple, okay? Uh, just a hypersurface case, uh, the linearization of this equation is going to be just uh, this one. Uh, basically, uh, okay, so if, if you think this uh, gamma is a graph, is a graph of function uh, f, okay? So I think that this, this guy is represented as a single, as a scalar function f, then the linearizing of this is going to be uh, the, this solution, this equation. Okay. This is equal to zero for any test function. Uh, okay, so that's a uh, very rough language, but it is in some sense true that this this equation reduces to this relationship, which is really you know weak form of. Uh, f being Laplacian, you know, or harmonic function, right? That's, if you linearize this, this, this is what you have. So from this, um, well, well, you know it's, it's harmonic function, nice and smooth, but the point is, okay, now if you have this, uh, what you can do is you, you use a suitable test function to show that, uh, well, in this case, you multiply, uh, you, you use phi to be, phi to be f times another test function or something. And then you do integration by parts, and you get this, uh, this equation is less than equal to some constant times. Well, let's say maybe just to be casual, uh, something like this, right? That is the gradient. Uh, this energy is bounded by, say, L2 norm. And so this is something so-called Cacioppoli type equation, Cacioppoli uh, inequality. Okay, uh, so this linear equation gives you this, but also this nonlinear equation also gives something similar. I, I, I don't have time to t talk about this, but you get something like this, okay, in principle, in a sort of, in the language of uh, countable rectifier set, okay? So uh, now, using this type of things, well, that's, that's a sort of starting point of the regularity theory, even for other regularity theory, okay? Now, what we have is quite different situation, right, for this bracket flow. I mean, we have this inequality, which, is, you, can, which you can use only for positive test function even. It's not even any test function, but only for positive test function, okay? So how, what, what is the uh, sort of procedure that, that you can think of? So um, now let's look at our equation and see um, what is the structure of this. So the proof is actually very different from uh, elliptic case, uh, I must say. It's, it's very different. Uh, you know, often parabolic problems, sometimes it's very similar to elliptic problem, right? Sometimes you just, uh, it's, it's probably not, it's a bit too much to say that it's just modification, right? But, but sometimes it's like that, right? You, you do elliptic and then you can do parabolic in a similar way. But here is extremely different, I would say. Very different proof. And the idea involved is also very different. Okay, so um, you remember, remember the, the brackets inequality is, is this guy, this one, with a, in, a, with a, in a distribution sense. And let's just uh, consider the uh, test function, which is just uh, space dependent. Just for simplicity, but remember, this is, has to be positive, no negative function. Is less than equal to um, number of phi dot h mu 
minus phi times h mu square d mu t. That, that was the uh, inequality. And uh, remember that the a priori um, bound we have is uh, this mean curvature is bounded in space time in L2. Okay, Not, it's, it's, it's a, this guy is um, just uh, bounded in L2 in space time integration. Okay, and uh, that, that's, I guess that's about it. <laughs> we don't have much. Now, uh, now uh, so let's, let's consider the idea. So now, Okay, again, just uh, consider the uh, situation of hypersurface case. Okay, just uh, let k go to n. And presumably, uh, we are looking at the place where things is supposed to be flat, right? So um, in that case, co-dimension one case, uh, this quantity, uh, let's see, let, let phi to be, uh, okay, also, let phi x to be um, more or less like, uh, characteristic function uh, function of um, this uh, set Rn, uh, okay, Rn plus one and uh, x one square. So this is, uh, assume that this, this guy is a cylinder. I guess I can use that, yeah, case. Okay. I take a test function, which is like a characteristic function of cylinder, okay, of radius one. So, um, so it's xn plus one, and looking at cylinder. And test function is like really uh, characteristic function. So, and also, I think I, I might as well take a homogeneous, the homogeneous uh, one that's independent in this direction. So phi is phi is really um, phi is really uh, depending only on uh, n my uh, n. Okay, so no dependence on x n plus one. So it's like one and zero. Okay, that's a, that's a sort of the image of uh, phi. If you like, you can think this is more like characteristic function itself, but since I can't flag in characteristic function here, so I'm just uh, doing a little bit of smoothing, okay? So I just think that uh, this is smooth out characteristic function. Then uh, what is this? This function, this, this right-hand side is uh, just, you know, if you just think this is more like characteristic function in, of the cylinder, this is nothing, of course, by uh, this gra the surface, gra I mean, this is after all the me uh, measure of the surface, so that's what you have uh, in the cylinder. Okay, let's call this cylinder C or something. Okay, inside, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so this one, okay. More or less, this one. If there's any hole or anything, that's what you have. And so um, that means that if if everything is very nice, uh, what you're looking at is really this surface area. Okay. Um, now I might uh, it's it, it, I can just subtract constant. Okay. I can do this because just it's a constant, okay, so it's a cylinder. So I should write this way. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Okay, I can suddenly take one inside. And if 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 all you know uh, everything is fine, then this and if you your surface is a nice sky, then you can do a Taylor expansion and this comes out to be about one half number of uh, f square, you know, if, if everything is nice, I mean, this is really nice if you can do this, but you can, of course, but just to give you an idea. 
Yeah? So uh, this is roughly, uh, you're looking at the change of the digital energy, in some sense, <laughs> if everything is nice. Okay, so this left-hand side is really like a change of the digital energy. It's a gradient square, you know, L, L2 is the one that you're looking at. And this part, well, just very roughly speaking, this is mean curvature, so if, if it's a mean curvature, and if you linearize it, this comes out to be about Laplacian of F, right, of square. Okay, so you're dumping by this term, this Laplacian F square, you know, you're trying to reduce this dilution energy by this Laplacian square. Well, this is, you have this term, but just forget it then. This is the driving the energy down, okay, in time. So that this you see this uh, kind of structure in this. Okay, so that you see. Let's see. Okay, so now I want to explain a bit more technical key point. Okay, um, and uh, just to explain this proposition, which may be. Um, uh, look, technical looking, but uh, geometrically sort of very interesting. And this is, I may call the, this geometric sovereign inequality. So that's, uh, it's in my book, uh, it's in my paper. Um, but, uh, okay, so let's see. So again, uh, let me, uh, well, let me choose a different uh, data, eta, one, okay, and be a smooth approximation. Okay, so this is, uh, I do general dimension then, uh, approximation of a characteristic function of uh, the k-dimensional cylinder. Oh, this is x where x1 square plus xk square is less than 1. Okay, so this is k dimensions sphere. I mean, you can think of hypersurface case, then that's just n in Rn plus 1. But then let, let's do this. And um, let omega k tilde to be the, um, uh, say, t. Okay, I'll explain what this is. Eta square dhkx, where t is just a rk cross zero. Okay. Well, I'll explain this now. Um, okay, so the picture is uh, what we saw here uh, in case of hypers uh, k equal n case. But um, note that this is, um, you know, if this is really characteristic function, not just approximation, this is going to be precisely omega sub k. It's really, uh, you know, you're integrating this t, t is really this k dimensional plane. So, uh, you know, since this, if this is characteristic function, it's really exactly omega k. But, uh, you know, it's slightly different. <laughs> so uh, I just mentioned that this number is almost omega k. Okay. Okay. okay, so these are fixed things. You know, um, eta and uh, omega k tilde is fixed. Now, the things I'm going to write is actually has nothing to do with time. Okay, so this is time independent statement. Um, now let mu to be a, a k-dimensional Hausdorff measure restricted to uh, gamma, where gamma is, uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, one, the one that I'm going to talk about. Well, you can think this as a uh, nice smooth surface if you like. Actually, even for smooth surface, this guy is, I'm, what I'm going to talk about is non-trivial. So maybe you can think this as smooth surface if you like, okay. Um, now, this, Right, and then I define 
um, alpha square to be the um, uh, mean curvature square times eta square d mu. Okay. So alpha is, okay, maybe I should do this. Half, okay. Alpha is uh, this uh, L2 mean curvature square, L2 mean curvature norm with eta multiplication. And uh, let C to be uh, also um, this uh, things. This is a distance function of uh, x to t squared mu. And uh, this is, uh, let's see. Okay, so x, x1, xk squared. So this is again cylinder, but uh, twice as big. Okay, so that's four. Okay. I, I want to take it. A little bit bigger one, ah, maybe take one half, okay. And also assume, um, I, I need to have a little bit of control of the, uh, 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 this uh, density ratio, we are x over rk. This is uh, for all Okay, let, let's call this as a cylinder C, maybe C2, okay, sorry. Well, this is a cylinder of the radius two, so uh, let's see, uh, Vrx is in C2. This is bounded by, say, E1, okay, E1. So uh, this is a bit technical point, but uh, I, I need some kind of density ratio. By the way, bracket flow satisfy this type of, you know, found uh, from yesterday's talk. So um, this is not a pro problem for us. Now, um, then uh, the statement is following. So then uh, there exist, uh, uh, say, three constants, C1, alpha 1, and uh, C1, uh, which uh, as follows. These are the uh, constant which depend, okay, maybe I should which depend, which only depend on a dimension and E1, okay? And uh, with the following. Okay, so what is the statement? So uh, there are two scenarios, two cases. Okay, so that if, uh, okay, so after I write, I'll explain this, but eta square d mu, uh, let's see, so that's I think minus omega k. If this is less than uh, omega k to the, okay, so these numbers are written uh, so that I, I exaggerate the estimate, but uh, it, of course, doesn't have to be 100, okay, so some number, okay, and um, alpha is less than alpha 1, then uh, the following holds, okay. Uh, so then, uh, in fact, uh, what we have is this omega squared d mu minus omega tilde k, this is bounded by, um, the two case C1 times alpha k, 2k over k minus 2. So these are not so, uh, so this um, exponent I'll explain in a moment, but uh, let me write this plus C square. If k is uh, bigger than 3, and uh, if k is 1 or 2, uh, you have uh, something beta, C1, alpha 2 over 3, C1 half, plus C square. Okay, so that, uh, that means you don't have this term, lacking this term. Okay. And the B is, um, okay, let's see. If 
this is not true. If this is um, in the range of And uh, let's see, this is another exaggeration, but 99, okay, tilde, okay, in this range, then the conclusion is alpha is, has a lower bound. Okay, so that's a statement. Okay, so this requires a bit of explanation. Okay. So this is really a estimate which is, has nothing to do with time, okay? But this is used very essential to get the um, uh, estimate for um, bracket flow. So this is saying the following. So you see this, these constants are sort of, uh, you know, independent of surface at all, just depend on the dimension and E1, that's this one. Now the, the, it, it, the claim is the following. So if this case is one, this one, this is the one that this mu, which is the surface measure, this is a case where your surface is very close to a disk. Okay, because you see, if this mu happened to be just a plane, T itself, then this is zero, of course. Okay? You see, uh, remember this definition, you know, this, this definition. If this is T, that's zero. Okay, so that means this A is a situation where the surface measure is very close to a you know, flat, flat plane. Then uh, also I, I'm assuming that the L2 mean curvature is small. Okay, so curvature L2 is small. Under these two assumptions, actually the difference is in fact not just this, but actually you get this estimate. That is, you have a mean curvature raised by this far. And actually, these are the lower order term in some sense. So the main term is this guy, in fact. Okay, so this is a most important term. Okay, maybe I'll I, I just skip this part because they, they, they are like um, something that's not so important at all. Okay. Well, actually, somehow, this, this one's sort of important, but this is, this is you can int interpret, but okay, so maybe I should say these are important. Okay. And so, so this is a dimension bigger than three case, okay? And if you don't have the up to, oh, three, it should be three also. Um, yeah, uh, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, pico, yeah. <laughs> yeah, three is included here, so, yeah, sorry. So uh, then in, if in low dimension case, you don't have this term, okay? So the main term is going to be this one, okay? Okay, so you have, uh, Sort of sober space like, you know, exponent, right? But it's not, I, I say it's geometric just because it's not a linear dependence. You see, uh, as I told you, this is like Dirichlet energy if everything is linearized. But this one, you know, this is not, uh, it's not, if, if it's a linear theory, you should have this, this bounded by something like this, right? I mean, it's, it's, it, 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 the, something which is low order is bounded by the higher order term. But you see this, you have this power, so in fact you are raising this by uh, basically k, k minus two, okay? So uh, in that sense it's kind of geometric, it's not like comes from linear theory, okay? Okay, and the, this, the second case is uh, also, I hope this makes sense, this is a case where your measure is a bit away from disk. You see this, is, uh, you see, you're, you're not this case, but you're away, you know, this guy is bigger than this number, but less than this number. Okay, so the less than this number means uh, it's not close to two omega t tilde, okay, not, not close to that, or not close to zero, okay? You know, if this is zero, this is violated. If it's two omega k tilde, it's violated. So you are in between, so that means, maybe just to be more specific, you have this range. Here is omega k tilde, which is, which is uh, the case when you have a flat plane, okay? And you have a, if you have two disks, you have two k tilde, but uh, and if there, there's nothing, it's zero. So this case B 
is the one that you are away from this one disk, but you are also away from this zero, so you are here. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Um, is that right? No, no. I think uh, it's fine. Yeah. So meaning. Uh, yeah, this, I think, well, maybe you should believe this picture more than, <laughs> than you got it. Yeah, you are in this range. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I, am I missing something? I wonder. I think it should be right. I, I'm not so sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, please take this picture as the right <laughs> statement, <laughs> if you like. Okay. Uh, right? So here, if you close twice on your head, you could be like. Uh, yeah, you are, that, that's the one that you're excluding here. Yeah. Uh, and then you yeah, found yeah. on alpha. That's why you... That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In extreme case, suppose this mu is just flat two plane, extremely close to each other. You know, then this side is going to be all zero. Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you don't want that. So, this is a condition I'm excluding two flat plane or empty set. Okay. Okay, so the conclusion is you have this lower bound for L2 mean curvature. Yeah. This means that you, either you have some kind of hole, maybe uh, you know, to have these kind of conditions, um, then uh, mean curvature cannot be extremely small. Okay? There is some lower bound, which is you know, uh, independent of the surface. Okay, so there's these two scenarios um, in this range. And the proof of this is um, uh, fairly actually tricky. Uh, you have to, uh, in fact, uh, there's a similar statement in, uh, well, for the specialist, uh, I just mentioned that there's a, uh, this uh, estimate analogous to this in Allard paper, but Allard paper only gives actually square here, in fact, instead of this power. And having this power is, uh, in fact, turned out to be essential in the argument that I'm going to talk about in a moment. So uh, you have to do this very carefully, uh, some very careful um, uh, covering argument and, uh, uh, and um, some uh, estimate called a cylindrical growth estimate. And uh, also you have to do some kind of Lipschitz approximation at this level already uh, to get this. So it, this one, I, I feel like I've written a very careful uh, state, uh, proof for this <laughs> in my paper. So if you're interested, please take a look. Okay. so. Uh, Right. So why 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 do we have this? Yeah, let's be clear in a moment. So this has to do with the estimate that we want. Okay. So now um, you just write um, write e of t to be now I back to the time dependent situation where eta square d mu t. That's a bracket flow and the minus omega k tilde, okay? So I, and now I, I think this as a time-dependent quantity, okay, in, which is moving in time, right? And then this proposition 4.1 gives you the, f okay, so this is not a precise statement, but let, let me just say uh, very rough, uh, roughly that this gives, just to give you the idea, Somehow, d d t of e t is less than equal to minus minimum of alpha one and e t of k minus two over k. Okay, so I, I think maybe I should restrict myself to k bigger than three k's. Lower dimensional case, it's easier to deal with, but I just right. Where, where Xt is the uh, time-dependent uh, Xc now. Okay, Xt is time-dependent T, okay. Um, okay, so why we have this? You see, the thing is, um, you see, the bracket inequality tells you that if you use eta square as a test function, bracket inequality, Number six tells you that d d t 
of eta squared limit t is less than equal to um, number of uh, number eta dot h minus h um, in t square, eta square, right? Now, note here is alpha here. This guy is exactly the, um, here is alpha, you know, maybe I should say now alpha t, that's time independent, time dependent quantity. So uh, this one is some term, first, uh, this term, which is the first term, um, okay, this minus alpha t squared, okay? Fine? So now, as I told you, you know, this is just a constant, so this, this uh, left-hand side is nothing but just, um, this is d dt of et, okay? This is d dt of et. Now, forget this one, just for simplicity. Now, you, this is saying that this is less than to the alpha t. Okay, now, we are close to the, we are close to the, um, our, our measure is sort of close to one, okay? So you are either this guy or this guy. Either, you know, one of the, one of the others, right? Now, if you are a bit away, note that you have a low bound of the mean curvature. So that means, you see, this is going to be minus constant. So it just keeps reducing the area at constant speed, right, if you're away. Now, if you're not, so now after a while, okay, so suppose at t equal to zero, you, you are, uh, your uh, surface area was, was in this range, but after a while you know for sure that the measure is going to be less than, you know, say, you, you, are, going to be enter, you are going to enter this range, okay? Now, once you're here, now note that E, here's ET, is going to be bounded by this quantity, but uh, this means, roughly speaking, if you invert or take a set of power, this means ET is, uh, you know, uh, this, if you raise this by, um, uh, let's see, K, K minus two, is alpha square, right? I mean, if you forget about all the, um, all the other terms, just for simplicity. But you see, you have a, there you have minus sign, so it should be like this, right? Uh, okay, maybe I should have an absolute value or something, okay? So, um, in some sense, you get this, okay. this term. And now, so, and note that this is exponent is smaller than one, so if you solve the ODE, in finite time, this E has to be equal to zero, okay? In finite, the, the fact that this is bigger than, uh, this is less than one is extremely important. If it's not, it's, if it's one, it takes, in, you know, infinitely long time. But since this is less than one, strictly, it becomes zero, but actually it doesn't become zero because of this error term, okay? So it doesn't, but the point is you can bound this E in terms of this C in, in some finite time, for sure. And actually this argument can do also, you can do this argument backward in time too. Uh, I, I don't have time to talk about it. But the point is with this kind of ODE argument, you get uh, the following type of estimate that is, dt uh, in the intermediate time, where t is, let's say, one, minus one half and one half, this is bounded by some constant times um, soup of xct, where t is, say, minus one to one, okay? Something like this. I mean, conceptually, not exactly, but conceptually, by this ODE argument. And then, note that this, as I told you, is more like a Dirichlet energy, and this is more like L2 energy, 
L2, you know, L2 norm. So you're bounding the you know, uh, soup norm of the Dirichlet energy in terms of the, uh, well, I guess this is not uh, L2 exactly, but you see uh, this, this, this is like L2 norm. Well, you have to take a soup over time, but again, you can actually bound this by um, something weaker. Okay? But anyway, you see uh, analog, right? Because you see, uh, this is more like Cacioppoli type inequality at this point. You are bounding the Dirichlet energy in terms of L2 norm, right? So that's exactly like Cacioppoli. And once you have this, the deviation of this uh, surface is roughly corresponding to the uh, mean curvature square too, because the change of this is basically controlled by the uh, mean curvature square. So this, this kind of quantity now is controlled by L2. Okay, so, so you are sort of in business now. You, you can do, once you have this type of estimate, then you can actually uh, do this uh, blow up argument um, of uh, digeology. And uh, there are many uh, technicality which uh, is difficult. Well, one somewhat peculiar difference from uh, elliptic uh, cases, uh, well, this is one, but the other point is <coughs> when you do a blow up argument, uh, you need to know precisely the, um, the height of your uh, s uh, the, this, uh, support of the uh, mu t. And uh, uh, there you do need uh, the soup norm bound of uh, somehow the height of the support. I, I, okay, maybe I should I just say you need um, need the um, what was the number the, the last uh, estimate I had in the previous lecture. I uh, the, the, I told you that you you, ha you need to have a sharp linear dependence on the um, this uh, I guess proven three point two. Uh, need 3.2 uh, to do a blow up argument. Which was not a uh, case for Allard case. Actually, Allard regularity theory, when you do blow up argument, you don't really need to have a sharp uh, a soup bound at all. Actually, you don't use it at all. But for here, because of the fact that we have a test function which needs to have a sign. You know, it has to be positive. You have to be very careful, uh, and you need to have suit bound uh, in terms of the blow up, uh, uh, blow up in, in, when you do blow up argument. Okay, so that's just a very brief um, idea. And as I told you, C to alpha involves some other uh, new uh, estimate, but I, that I don't have time. Now, uh, just to uh, conclude, I, I just mentioned that uh, so this gives you some kind of uh, at least generic regularity of this bra uh, bracket flow. But um, the other things which uh, is uh, known in this kind of framework, I mean, strictly speaking, in this framework, is uh, we know a little bit about um, 1D triple junction regularity. That is, if you, your uh, flow is close to one dimensional triple junction in a weak sense of measure, then uh, you have certain, uh, we have some regularity theory for that. Um, but that's about uh, all we know at this point. And uh, so, and this is of course um, assuming the unit density as well. Um, but if you don't have these uh, unit density assumptions, even the static case or stationary case, it's, it's known it's very, very difficult to do anything. So, um, but maybe if you try to do bracket flow with higher multiplicity, maybe there's some hint. <laughs> Actually, maybe if you do something more general, maybe you're lucky. I don't know, that's possible. And uh, I hope that the, some of the uh, estimate that we gained uh, doing this estimate, you know, doing this result uh, may be useful for other geometric analysis problems. So uh, with this, I'd like to conclude my lecture. Thank you.